comes down from this ruling on the on the California death penalty. The death penalty on Wednesday was was ruled the California death penalty rather was ruled to be unconstitutional. Now, they didn't rule the death penalty or the taking of one's life as being unconstitutional. In fact, what happened was US District Judge Cormac Carney, who's in uh, Orange County, he ruled that the system was unconstitutional. Not the the means of execution, not the execution itself, but the the system of execution, meaning the uh, that phase of the punishment, when it comes to our our our, uh, our crime and punishment, that phase unconstitutional. He overturned the death sentence of Ernest Dwayne Jones, and now he was sentenced to die for rape and murder of his girlfriend's mother from back in 1992. Carney said that the inmate faced complete uncertainty as to when or even whether he would be executed. And we discussed this a little bit yesterday. Basically, what, what uh, Carney was saying is 900 people sentenced to death in California since 1978. Only 13 have been executed, meaning it turns into almost like a lottery. Uh, and you have to be not only convicted, but then unlucky enough to be one of the 13 chosen. He said it just it's too much time. There's too much uncertainty involved. And as a result, he said, that uncertainty leads to a cruel and unusual circumstance. Basically, what the judge said is, you're not killing the inmates fast enough. Joining me right now is a gentleman who's very close to this, is uh, John Dadian, who normally joins us as a political analyst, but has a very personal take on what's happening here. John, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, about your your personal perspective, uh, not only this uh, the death penalty ruling here, but but the the crime and punishment and capital crimes here in in California. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, I've been involved with uh, victims' rights issues for uh, uh, quite a few decades uh, now. Uh, I was living up in Northern California uh, in 1975. My father was a cab driver, and he was a, a murder victim. So for the past uh, few decades, every couple of years, I have to go to a a parole hearing because in those days, in the 1970s, the laws were a lot looser um, uh, and there was the death penalty was an option. If the if the same crime that was against my father was held today, it would be a death penalty case, um, you know, with the exception of what recently just happened. But um, because there was a torture involved, there was a kidnapping involved, and there was robbery involved. So all of those would have been circumstances for a death penalty. But in those days, a uh, person was only given a few years. However, they've been in a, a, a prison for uh, the past couple decades. Now, uh, the, the death penalty was put on hiatus in 72, came back in 1978. And unfortunately, I mean, fortunate for the, for, the, for the assailant, unfortunately for you as a victim trying to, trying to seek some sort of closure on this, uh, the death penalty was not available. So when you saw this ruling yesterday, what was your what was your visceral reaction? Well, the the ruling um, the ruling uh, this week was uh, uh, pretty hard to take, just because again, uh, some of these people that are on death row, uh, I, I don't want this to sound tongue in cheek, but they're really bad people. Yeah. I mean, we're not. Uh, I hate to phrase it this way, but we're not talking about just murder. We're talking about first degree murder with some special circumstances, some real heinous crimes. So. That certainly made my blood boil. But in my case, there's actually, even after almost 40 years, Chris, there's a new law that took effect just this year that says if somebody was a juvenile at the time of the crime, that there has to be special formula that's considered. And in my case, the person was a juvenile, so... Uh, they might um, have a chance of getting out. And coincidentally, the reason why this decision this week really made my blood boil is I uh, literally have to go uh, for, I forget, you know, how many times it's been, but I have to go for a parole hearing next week uh, up to the prison in Chowchilla, which, quite frankly, is in the middle of nowhere in Central California. Yeah. So here you are every couple of years. You have to take this this journey, this trek, just to try to keep your father's killer behind bars. 
Yeah, no, I'll be honest with you. It, uh, it's it's not fun. I mean, it's uh, you know the, the stress starts coming on. I I get physical reactions. My my hair uh, gets a little falling out. Uh, my, my teeth start bleeding, etc. Just the stress is uh, unbelievable. And, and you know, it's a couple hour hearing. And you have to uh, the, the the victim's family gives a statement at the end. So uh, it's 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 quite it's quite a process. All right. So you you're being dragged through that, and you're watching what this uh, this federal judge says on this. Now the judge said that the system was broken. He didn't say that uh, the death penalty was wrong. He didn't say that the uh, the means of execution was wrong or that our lethal injection drug combination was off. He said that the system itself is broken. Does this give California an opportunity or a, a catalyst to try to fix uh, what it is that's that's preventing them from actually following through on so many of these sentences? It, it may, but again, it's, I, I'm not pushing your mouth, but I think you would agree. Unfortunately, though, it, you, you, uh, I, I agree with the judge that it's broken, uh, but that's as far as I go. You know, um, we're going to see what happens to all these people that are on death row. If you remember, not that long ago, pretty recent memory, within I think the last year, we had several former governors, Governor Duke Machen, Governor Wilson, even Governor Gray Davis, get together and say that the system also was broken. So, I mean, everybody agrees that anybody who's convicted of a, I think most people agree, anybody convicted of a heinous murder uh, should not spend decades on death row. Uh, So in that sense, I agree with the judge that clearly the system's broken. I mean, and then you look at other states such as Florida or Texas that does not have this, you know, lag time. I, I think it's very unfortunate. Uh, John Dadian, uh, normally with us. In fact, we'll talk to you again on Monday, John, at the same time uh, with our with our state of San Diego. But in this case, a very personal take on this uh, this current event. John, thanks so much for your time this morning. I appreciate you sharing that too. Take care, thanks, Chris. John. Good luck. Uh, still to come here, stuff. Get- 